recording to start and then we'll start. Okay, yeah, fine, here we go. Okay, so what did we look, what did we go through in the last class? Okay, I'm, I'm asking the in-campus students, what did we learn last class? We started by looking at one person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Is that the first thing we started with? Okay. Yeah, so we looked at the Trinity, and the reason is that God is always expressed in this way, or referred to in this way, as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And since we are going to be looking at uh, the person of the Holy Spirit, and in detail, it's it's only important that we back up a little bit and see, you know, this is, this is God, this is how God is mentioned. So, what is this Trinity all about, right? So we looked at different places in Scripture where Trinity is mentioned. Okay, so we saw that the word Trinity is, is not in scripture, not in the Bible, but it's something that is a word that was used to explain this truth of this triune God, right? Uh, that triune Godhead um, to people, to the church, right? Okay, so we also um, started by looking at the fact that God, the Holy Spirit is God, okay? So the characteristics that we might attribute to God the qualities that we might say, okay, this is who God is, okay, the same qualities we would attribute to the Holy Spirit. Okay, when we looked at several verses which point to the fact that uh, the Holy Spirit is eternal, the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, all knowing, all powerful, uh, and He is sovereign, and so on. Okay, so uh, another thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit is co equal with the Father and the Son. Okay. So how do we know that? You know, several verses that we saw, we saw Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter 5, is it? Uh, when we looked at uh, Ananias and Sapphira. Um, yeah, I think it's Acts chapter 5. Yeah, Acts chapter 5. He's talking to the Holy Spirit as God. And he also says, you know, he's saying you have lied to the Holy Spirit. And in verse 5, he says that, verse uh, 4, sorry, he says that you have not lied to men but to God. Okay, so we know that the Holy Spirit is God, but is He on the same level as the Father and the Son? Okay, we looked at one scripture. Can you, you know, can you, you remember that? We looked at one scripture in when, while we were studying Trinity, which pointed to the fact that yeah, He's co-equal with the Father and the Son. You remember? Yeah. So when, when the Lord Jesus is talking about baptism, right, is in giving his instruction for baptism to the disciples, what did he say? You baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So he's placing all at the same level, pointing to the fact that they are co-equal. Okay, one is not at a lower level than the other. Okay, Now they have different roles, in the sense the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters, the Father spoke, and scriptures talk about, Hebrews talks about how everything was made through the Son, so they have different roles, where the Son came and He went to the cross um, to carry our sins. So they, he has, you know, all, the, all of them have different roles, but we see that they are co-equal. Okay, Many times we think that, okay, Maybe God the Father, you know, is referred to as the Father, maybe He is, or maybe God the Son is second and the Holy Spirit is third. Father, anyway, that's the order in which He's mentioned. It is mentioned, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So maybe first, second, third. Well, the thing is that they are co equal. Same, right? Um, let's look at. Um, um, yeah, let's look at um, Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Okay. Isaiah chapter 11. Okay. Isaiah chapter 11, 
it refers to the the qualities of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be looking at it, um, you know, a little later. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Uh, let me just read. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Okay, look at this. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Okay, so he's talking about different qualities that you would attribute to God. He's called the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Okay. Um, so, and and other places we see that um, you know Genesis one also that uh, that the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth, and God said. Okay? So, um, we see that the Father, Son, and the uh, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal. Okay, so if we have an understanding, maybe you know, is junior God. Right? It's not so. Right? There's, there's, there seems to be different roles that were assigned, and they gladly took it up. The Father, the Son, saying, "Okay, I'll go. I'll, I'll carry the sins on the cross. I'll go to the cross." Uh, but we see that uh, they are co-equal. Okay, it's, again, just like the Trinity, it is important for us to understand that it's important for us to not just understand but receive that truth okay okay let's look at uh, another aspect the holy spirit is a person and not a thing okay so if it is a thing like a table or a chair you would refer to it as a inanimate object right so you will say okay it is put it on the table you know that's a table it is a table you will not say he is a table or she is a table right because that because it's it's not a person right so sometimes we make the mistake of saying uh, referring to the holy spirit as it the holy spirit it will come down it will come upon you right because we have this whole aspect of power being associated with the Holy Spirit. Because when we say power, we don't say he, she, right? We say it, you know, electricity, power. It is, uh, it is gone. It is cut. It has come back. So sometimes we refer to you know, the Holy Spirit as a it, but that's incorrect because the Holy Spirit is a person. Okay? So let's look at a few verses here. Um, why we say Holy Spirit is a person. Okay? Holy Spirit has intellect. First Corinthians 2. We saw that he searches the deep things of God. Right? Who can search? You know, somebody who's a person, he searches the deep things of God. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 15. Okay. Acts chapter 15 and verse 28. Acts chapter 15 and verse 28. Okay, it says, um, let's just, just give a background. Right? Acts chapter 15, it talks about the council at Jerusalem. Okay? These were the church, the elders, they all gathered together. Now they had to decide on one thing, okay? because there were other Gentile churches, which means non-Jewish people who were coming to the Lord. Now they had their customs, they, had, they were not circumcised according to the, you know, as the custom of the Jews. So there were some people who had gone to them and said, you have to be circumcised, you have to follow the law of Moses in order to be a believer, in order to be saved. Okay? Now, that was not correct. Right? That was not the right thing to do. So they had a meeting to decide that. And at the end of the meeting, um, this is what um, they said. They gave a letter. And in that letter, this is what they wrote. Okay, so part of that letter is verse um, 27, 20, 28, right? What did they write? Verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Okay, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. So here, 
fact that the Holy Spirit, they were interacting with the Holy Spirit. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is saying, okay, you know, yeah, he's giving his choice, he's giving his opinion. He's saying, okay, this is this is good, right? So it seemed good to us, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit that we should do this. Okay. The Holy Spirit knows the truth, he is the truth. Okay, again, first Corinthians two. Let's go there. First Corinthians two and verse eleven. Uh, maybe we can read from uh, 10 and 11. Okay. Um, now God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man who is in him, even then, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So uh, when it comes to knowing God, we know that he is the truth. He is the truth itself. Now the Holy Spirit searches and brings forth the truth of who God is. Right. So we see that uh, that is what he does. He knows the truth. He searches and he, sh he brings forth the truth to us. Right. Um, so the other thing that we see is that he teaches and he reminds. Okay. He teaches and he reminds. Therefore, is you know he is a person who is relating to us, who is teaching us. You know what what is involved in teaching? Is it just presentation of facts, communication of truth? You saying something? Okay. Instruction uh, in teaching also there could be questions, right? Somebody's if it's a teaching, typically you know like. I would ask, okay, do you have any doubts? Do you have any questions? Right? And you would ask, and you know, hopefully, if I know the answer, I will say. So in teaching, there's also this two-way communication, right? You're asking some questions and receiving some answers. Right? So here we see that the Holy Spirit teaches and he also reminds us. Right? So he does that. He reminds us, hey, hey, remember. I told you this. The Holy Spirit does that. Okay, John chapter fourteen and verse twenty-six. Okay, John chapter fourteen and verse twenty-six. Um, okay, so the Lord is actually talking about the Holy Spirit to the disciples. Okay, so He says, "But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in My name." He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Okay, what is he saying? Now the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. Okay, you ask, so we can ask the Holy Spirit. Things that we don't understand, we can ask. So he's going to speak to us, he's going to teach us. So he will teach us. And the other interesting thing is that he will also bring to remembrance the Lord Jesus says, meaning that. Whatever he has taught the disciples, they were actually being reminded. This is what Jesus spoke. This is what Jesus did. Right? They were reminded. And, uh, and that's the beautiful ministry of the Holy Spirit, even today for us, that he will teach us. So we can say, Holy Spirit, teach us. You know, you're the author of the scriptures. You, know, you teach us. He will teach. So can we ask him questions? Yes, we can. Right? So he will teach us. He will show us from the word the answers. And he will also remind us, right? So suppose you're going through life and then maybe uh, you've read the word, you've read the scriptures, and then you know you forgot all about it, but then he will bring to remembrance, he will remind us, remember, this is what you read. Remember, this is the truth. Right? He will remind us. And when we look at Acts chapter 2, you know, we see that um, uh, um, the, you know, the apostle Peter, like he's giving one message, you know, he's just been filled with the Spirit. He's giving a message. And definitely it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's quoting from the book of Joel, right? The prophet Joel, and he's giving this prophecy and I mean, uh, he's pr about that prophecy and saying, hey, this is what it is. This is what, you know, was prophesied by Joel. Now, how did he do that? It was by the ministry of the Holy Spirit who was reminding, hey, this is what it is. Right? And, and many such times we see, even on the road to Emmaus, 
right? Um, we see, even though the Holy Spirit is not mentioned there, we see that, uh, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus reminding them, is talking to them, and then the people, their, their eyes were opened, the disciples, at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? So we see that he teaches and he reminds, okay? He also testifies, right? He testifies to our spirit. What, is, what does testify mean? Okay, let's look at that verse, John chapter 15 and verse 26. Okay, 15, 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Okay, what does this testify mean? Anyone? To tell? Is it something more than tell? Sorry? Oh, man, you know, you know, we're introducing new words. Okay. Uh, Rinchen, right? Rinchen? Okay. So you're saying witness, testify. Okay. He, so the Lord Jesus is saying he will testify of me. So what does that, uh, that is mean? What does that mean when the Holy Spirit comes? The Holy Spirit is going to, of course, the Lord Jesus says in 1426 that he's going to teach, he's going to remind of his words. So he's going to point to Jesus. He's going to say, hey, this is who Jesus is. And, um, and it's, it's from a personal testimony. Right? It's like, this is who Jesus is. I can personally testify that I have gone through this. Right? It's from that point of experience. Right? So, and information and knowledge. So he's going to point to Jesus and saying, this is who Jesus is. This is what Jesus does. And this is who, you know, this is who he is. So in your spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit is testifying. Okay, uh, this is something that is true. This is something that is important. This is something that what Jesus would do. He's testifying to us in the inner man about Jesus. Okay, so he will, it's not just information, but it's information that connects with our spirit. Right? We know that, okay, this is the truth. Right? We are convinced, convinced, we are convicted. He will testify of as he testifies about Jesus, okay? Um, so, yeah, the other thing that we see is that he guides um, John chapter 16 and uh, verses 13 and 15, okay, 13 to 15. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you, things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Okay, so one very important thing, that he will guide us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. So what does guide mean? Huh? To direct. Vincent, you're always giving new words. <laughs> um, so what does guide mean? Have you, have, have you have ever like had a guide, a tourist guide? Anyway, right? You go to some historical place, some palace. There's a tourist guide. Now, if you go to, you know, on the way to the, from Bangalore to Mysore, there is a place called Sri Rangapatna, okay? Where the, there's a fort. I think it is Tipu Sultan's fort, I think. So you will, once you go into that Sri Rangapatna, you will see a lot of these tourist guides. Sir, 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 you know, what, what do they want to do? They want to take you, show you, this is the fort. This is what it is. They want to show you all these things. Let me take you, you know. You don't know where to go, where to find. Let me take you. They'll guide you to the right place. They'll show you uh, and explain to you the historical importance of that place. A tourist guide. Okay. So a guide is, you know, when we, when we, when we need guidance, when we need help, uh, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get some things done. The Holy Spirit will guide us. Okay. He will guide us, Lord Jesus said, into all truth. Now, you know, when we say truth, the whole world is searching for truth. Truth is a very precious commodity. And everybody's trying to define their own truth. Okay, this is what truth is, this is what it is. Right? And trying to find the whole lifetime, they're trying to find what is true. Okay, I remember traveling 
um, you know, I used to work in Goa. Uh, I used to visit Goa on work um, in my in the company that I used to work for. So uh, once I was traveling in the train, and uh, there was this lady who had come from you know some European country, and so I was just asking her, you know, you know, why are you going uh, to Goa? Why are, is it a holiday? Are you visiting? Well, then she says, no, I, you know, I've come for peace. I, I, I want to. I'm searching. I'm on a search. Um, I'm searching. I want to experience truth and you know, all those other words that you used. And so I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, I was just taken aback. Okay, it's not just a holiday to visit the beach or the thing, but she's actually this search, you know, this unrest that something is true and I don't have it has really triggered her to move across, fly across continents to come and just try and see. Maybe this place will have it. Right? Truth, very precious. And all of us, you know, we've received the truth into our lives. Just think about it. And you receive Jesus, who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We have actually received that. Okay? So we owe the world, uh, you know, an encounter with the truth. Like we owe our neighbors, we owe that. Because we've received the truth. Okay, so here the Lord Jesus says the Holy Spirit will guide us into truth. Right? He will not take us into anything deceptive, something false, but He's going to guide us, take us into truth, guide us into all that is true. Right? He's going to lead us. Right? Okay. Then we also see that He has a will, which means that He can decide, He can choose. Um, so he has a will. Okay, um, so let's look at uh, the same chapter, um, John chapter fifteen, and we are going down to verse twenty-six. It says that he will testify of me. Now, when we look at that word "will," it means that you make up your mind to do it. Right? Um, like the psalmist says, "I will bless the Lord at all times." His praise will be in my mouth. What does it mean? His praise will continually be in my mouth. It means that he's making a choice. Right? He's making a decision. I will bless the Lord. And the Lord Jesus says, you know, I will come to your house saying that I've made a decision and I'm coming to your house. The same way the Holy Spirit, you know, it says that he will testify of me. So he has a, he can make a choice. It's not like, um, you know, it's, it's not like something that like a machine. Which does not have a choice. That he has a will. He makes a choice. Okay, next one. He has emotions. How do we know that? Well, the Bible says that he can be grieved. He feels sad. Right? He can be grieved. Ephesians chapter five or yeah, four, I think. Let's look at Ephesians four verse thirty. Um, okay, Ephesians 4, okay, Paul's instruction, okay, maybe let's read verse 29, okay, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, okay, that it may impart grace to the hearer, so he's talking about using good words, edifying words, words that build up. And uh, verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And then he continues, okay, Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So which means that when we indulge in these things, the Holy Spirit is grieved. He is saddened. Okay, that's what grieve means, right? Grieve means uh, intense sadness. I think it's it's not just sad, but it's intense sadness. Okay, he's like he's grieved because you know I, I'm just wondering, you know, why is he grieved? Well, he's indwelling you. Right? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He indwells us, uh, and then he sees us indulging in certain things, and he is grieved. He feels that intense, and sometimes we feel that emotion ourselves. 
right? So the Holy Spirit is grieved. Um, okay, let's let's move on to the next one. Well, the Holy Spirit, He can communicate. He can speak, right? So, which means that we have the privilege of receiving communication from the Holy Spirit. Right? If I'm speaking, you can hear. Right? You can hear. You can listen. You can hear. So when we say the Holy Spirit speaks, all of us, we can hear. Right? Maybe we know that, but then how many of us really hear on a day-to-day -day basis? Right? Or do we spend time Listening. I remember watching a skit. I think it's by this two guys called the Skit Guys. And in that skit, you know, this this guy goes and he sits and he's he's just about to, you know, maybe morning he's just about to just pray. He says, "Okay, God, you know, he's got his list. And he's saying, Lord, you know, you know this 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 need I have, this challenge I have, this thing I need to do." Uh, please take care of it. Okay, God. Amen. And then he goes. And in that skit, God is like, hey, but listen, uh, I want to, you know, about that thing that you prayed, um, I want to tell you something. But he's already gone. Okay. In the night he comes, God, um, yeah, it was okay day, I think. But anyway, uh, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm going to rest now. Please take care of me. And uh, anyway, that's it, God. Uh, I'm sleeping, and then God, and then God says, "Hey, but listen, um, you know that day that you know remember that person that you met today, he's already snoring, <laughs> completely tuned off, right? Okay, just for us to know that the Holy Spirit speaks, but we need to understand how does He speak, which means He uses a language, right? In what way does He speak? And you know the privilege, greatest privilege is that we have been designed to hear his voice. He's not just speaking into vacuum. We hear. We can hear. We can understand. Right? Because how can he guide otherwise? He will guide us into all truth. He will teach you. He will remind you. All that the Lord Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Right? So how can we know that unless we, as believers, have been designed to hear the Holy Spirit? Okay, and so uh, if we are here, you know, we need to we need to put away, you know, if if we have any other thought saying, okay, everybody else can hear God, everybody else can understand God, everybody else can, but I can't, right? If you've been thinking like that, it's it's time to put that away because this is for all of us. The Holy Spirit is for you; He is indwelling you. He speaks. We just need to understand right, how he speaks. He guides. We just need to understand how he guides. And more than that, you know, uh, we just need to receive his guidance and obey. It. Okay, right. So he he speaks. Okay, let's look at a few um, um, verses here. Okay, Acts chapter thirteen. You know, we looked at that verse where. Um, Acts chapter 15, where they said, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. Now, how do they know the Holy Spirit spoke to them? Hey, it's good for me, right? Let's look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Okay, Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Um, a background about this, um, this verse. This is in the church called Antioch. Okay, so Paul is there. It's a, it's a non-Jewish place, Antioch. Um, Paul is there. Uh, Barnabas is there, and a lot of other people from Jerusalem, they are their prophets, teachers, they're all there. Okay, And verse 2 says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said. Okay, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, what happened? The Holy Spirit said, which means the Holy Spirit spoke. And it was spoken in such a way that they understood, because it's recorded for us here. Right? So what did this? What did the Holy Spirit say? It said, "Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them." Okay. So they heard the Holy Spirit speak. 
and it's a very specific instruction. You see, he knows the names, Barnabas and Paul, and Saul. So he knows the names. And he's giving them, giving them as very specific instruction. Now separate them for the work that I have called them. So they've received it. They've heard the voice, they've received it. And they're very serious about it. Look at the next verse. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. They obeyed. They're saying, hey, the Holy Spirit has called you. He's asking us to separate both of you. So let's pray and you better start, get going. You know, whatever he's called you to do, you better do it. They obeyed. And, um, you know, it's not like a simple journey, right? Today, if you want to go from one place to another, it's it's fine. You know, you just get a ticket, you book it online, or maybe you have your own vehicle, you just, you know, fill the petrol or diesel, whatever, and you just go. But those days, you think about it, travel. No, no travel, there's nothing online, and it, it costs a lot of money. But they still, they did that, right? Because they felt that, hey, Holy Spirit, we have interacted. He is leading us into truth. He is guiding us. We have spent time with him. He has spoken. And what he's spoken is something that is weighty, something that is important. It needs to be obeyed. So let's do it. So they send these two guys on their first missionary journey. Just think about it. The first missionary journey of Paul, he's made, you know, after that, second and third. And the first missionary journey happens because the Holy Spirit spoke to them, right? And they heard, they understood, they obeyed. Right? So it teaches us something about the Holy Spirit that, yeah, he's giving some very important instructions. We better learn how to listen, and we better learn or set our hearts to obey him. OK, next one. Uh, you can go through the other references also, right? There are others which I mentioned there. Um, he can be insulted. Okay, Hebrews 10 talks about how can we insult the spirit of grace? Okay, how do you insult someone? What's your name? Charisma. Okay, so Charisma, how do you insult someone? <laughs> there are many ways. How would you insult someone? <laughs> huh? Anyone? Okay, how did you get insulted, Rinchin? Let's say somebody insulted you. How did you get? Last time you got insulted, how was it? And who, who, how did they do it? You don't have to go into the details, but just briefly. Okay, they teased you, made fun of you. You got insulted. Okay. So they made fun. Yeah. Vijay, right? Vijay? Huh? Prince, okay. Who's Vijay? Oh, you're Vijay. Okay, sorry. When I'm not respected. Okay. When you're not respected, you feel insulted. Okay, online folks, anything that you want to put on the chat? So here we got a response that when somebody makes fun, they are insulted and they are not respected. They feel insulted. Any other? Any, you can just put it on the chat. Maybe your own experience of how you, how someone insulted you or how you got insulted. Um, okay. So when, okay, Nina says when, when we, when we tell someone to do something, and they don't consider it, they do exactly opposite of it, as if they didn't even hear what you said. Right. Other thing is, when, you, when they say, OK, you listen very carefully, and then don't do, don't do it at all. Right. And you're like, didn't I just go spend this half an hour explaining to you why it should be done? And you're like, just totally ignored. Right. So the thing is, let's, you know, let's look at, uh, OK, do I? Yeah, I'm just uh, looking at some of these uh, responses. Okay. There's quite a few here. Let me just read out. Um, 
Surya through gossips and bad words. Nina, uh, by saying something derogatory, yes. Uh, Rohit, hurting our weak areas, okay. So making fun of something that you cannot do or you're you know, limited by, yeah. Um, neglecting Prabhu, um, Krisha, belittling, yeah. Thank you for all those responses. Okay. So the thing is, uh, now we know the Holy Spirit can be insulted. So just think in how many ways we have insulted the Holy Spirit. First of all, if we live our life, if we go through life, totally neglecting the Holy Spirit. Right? He's indwelling and uh, we just totally neglect. Don't talk. Don't pray. Completely neglect. We insult. Right? You know, in all these ways, whatever you share, we could be, we could end up insulting the Holy Spirit. Right? So he can be insulted. And it's up to us not to do that. Uh, Acts chapter 5, we saw uh, Ananias, he lied to the Holy Spirit. Okay, it was, he was actually lying to a, actually, if you see, he was lying to a human being. Yes or no? Yeah, Ananias was actually having a conversation with Peter, uh, or maybe, you know, I don't know, we don't know whom he gave that money to. It just says that he gave and laid it as the apostles' feet. But this whole action, you know, he was thinking within himself, okay, I sold it for 100 rupees, now I'll just give 10, because I need that 90 to invest in something, etc. But I'll pretend as if this is the whole thing. That's what he did, right? Um, this whole 90, I'm bringing, oh, I'm sold it, and this is thing, and why don't you take it? Right? So Peter says, you lied to the Holy Spirit. Like, whatever you did, this action, the Holy Spirit sees, hears, knows, and you actually lied to the Holy Spirit. So we can lie to the Holy Spirit. And also, we, he can be blasphemed. Okay? Um, there's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What does, it, what does blasphemy mean? What does it mean to blaspheme someone or blaspheme God? Speak against in very strong words. Okay? We, we put down. Like the Lord Jesus was accused of blasphemy. Right? They're saying he blasphemes God. Why did they accuse him? Can you, uh, I mean, you remember? Right? I and my father are one, right? He said, I am that I am. And they were, you know, they, they were very angry. They said, this is blasphemy. You know, we mean he's worthy of death, right? Why? Because he was, he was actually speaking the truth, but they understood it as, you know, here's a human being. How can he be God? How can he elevate himself to the status of God, right? So... The Holy Spirit can be blasphemed. You know, uh, can you think of an instance when the Lord Jesus pointed out and says, uh, and he said that, hey, this is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Any instance that you can think of in the Gospels and in his ministry? Yeah? When Jesus was casting out demons, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, very good, yeah. So, so the thing is this: that Jesus went about ministering, and uh, he was, you know, uh, delivering people, uh, was casting out the demons, and the Pharisees and uh, you know the religious leaders they said that he is casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. So they said that. He, it's because of that power he's doing it. So what, have, what were they saying? They were attributing a work of God, a work of the Holy Spirit, to the work of Satan himself. Right? So the Lord said something very, very, um, you know, uh, very, uh, I would say very strong language. He said, you know, this is blasphemy. 
you know, I'm I'm actually casting by the finger of God, said the, you know, by the spirit of God, by the finger of God, these are cast out, but you know, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, because they're saying that there's no comparison to God and the powers of darkness. You know, he's holy. And here, the powers of darkness, they are, they are, you know, they are, they are so unholy. They are, uh, you know, we can't. They, they are, what do they call? They are called spirits of wickedness and uh, um, unclean spirits, and so on. So, by God, who's infinitely holy, there is no darkness in Him. To attribute such kinds of entities, spiritual entities, to God and say He's actually doing it was an insult, was a blasphemy, right? So people can blaspheme, they can, you know, they can blaspheme, he, the Holy Spirit can be blasphemed too. And, um, yeah, you know, even today people do that. Uh, and the Lord Jesus had some very strong words. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Nina, that's right. Um, just see your response now. Okay, so he can be resisted. Okay, that's another thing, which means that, you know, he's the one who's guiding but we can actually resist his guidance. He can be telling us to do something, but we can resist. What does resist mean? What does it mean to resist? Stop. Okay. Um, you know, he's saying, okay, can I just show you something? No, I don't want. So you're resisting. Resisting the person, resisting the words, resisting the guidance, right? So he can be resisted to, he can be quenched. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. To, okay, this thing, quench, has the picture of a fire being put out. Okay, you have a fire burning, and you just bring a bucket of water or a bucket of sawdust and you know, just put it out. Okay, that is quenched to stop. So the maybe the Holy Spirit is saying something, He's just you know leading you to do something, directing us to do something, and we quench the work of the Spirit. Right? Maybe He's warning us and we can quench the work of the Spirit. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll stop right here. We just have another minute, and what I'd like us yeah, two minutes. Okay, what I'd like us to do is just close our eyes and pray. Okay, we we'll just pray. And uh, what we heard in this in this session that He's a person. Okay, so what we're going to do is ask God. You know, maybe we have insulted, maybe we have resisted, maybe we did, we have ignored the Holy Spirit. Um, but let's, you know, make a 180 degree turn, right? And say, come Holy Spirit, have your way with us. Um, I want to, I want to yield. I want to be led by you. I want to be guided by you. And even as you speak, open my ears, open my heart to hear your voice, to receive your instruction. Speak to me. Guide me. I don't want to resist you. I don't want to quench your work in my life. Yes, Lord, we, will, we welcome your ministry among us, Lord. Come have your way in each one of our hearts, in each one of our lives. We open up our lives to you. Speak to us. Lord, remove all those things that are barriers, Lord. Everything that is a barrier to hear your voice, to receive your guidance, to enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Everything that's a barrier, let it be removed in Jesus' name. Release us into the freedom that we have in you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hey, thank you, guys. You can go for your break. Um, thank you, um, online students. Uh, we'll take... A, um, um, yeah, you can go for a break and then you can go on to your next class. Thank you. God bless.